Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be feeding the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. This is the Crotalus Animantius and this is the world's largest rattlesnake and this snake can get up to eight feet long and has a distinctive diamond shaped pattern on its back which it gets its name. So the venom from this snake is a pretty potent venom and can be extremely dangerous and potentially lethal if left untreated. But this snake prefers to avoid confrontation and will usually only strike if threatened or cornered. So most people that get bitten by the snake are either doing something they are not supposed to be doing and handling. But here on Hostways Exotics, we are trained professionals and we do this, man. And we love our snakes to death because as you guys know, I've had this snake for a little while. But as you don't know, the rouse snake gets its name from the warning sound it gets. If you've heard a little bit here, he's been rattling just a little tad bit. And that is what it is here. We get you guys a zoom in of his rattle. Pretty awesome little rattle. He's going to get a little bit longer. Each time they shed, they do gain another button, which is pretty awesome fact about rattlesnakes, if you don't know that as well. These snakes can be found in the southeastern United States, including states such as Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and various other habitats. They inhabit a variety of ones, including forest swamps and grasslands. And the ecological role for this snake is despite their venomous nature, Eastern Diamondbacks play an important role in our ecosystem as the top predators. They help control the population of rodents and other small animals contributing to the balance of their respective habitats. So, needless to say, I enjoyed the facts and explaining some stuff about this awesome species, a snake to you guys. But, we gotta get started with this feeding video. So, I have a pretty decent sized little rat pup here i think we'll make a good meal for our friend but we got to get him in here so we're not gonna mess around like we did last time and have it like you know what i mean the rat j almost jump back out on us so we're gonna go ahead and close this thing on up and let him do his thing you know what i mean I got the rat's tail in there. I don't think that's gonna be good. <clears throat> yeah, he ain't like that at all. So now that we got our rat inside, I could probably slide our camera. So I'm still trying to get used to doing feeding videos in these new tanks. What was that? And if you can hear, and you see he's back in his little thinking mode again. He stopped rattling his tail. He's not really paying me any attention, but he definitely knows there's a meal in here. Oh, I must have set him off when I was moving stuff. This little center divider is going to be the death of me here. I'm trying to catch stuff and make sure I get it on film for you guys. Because I like watching these videos just as much as you guys do as I do editing them. That's a gorgeous looking snake though, man. He's growing and getting bigger every single day. I'd probably say he's knocking around on the about the three foot range, three and a half, four foot range. Looking beautiful. We are going to have to practice over here because now, see, he's over here on the other side. And that's the light from the light I'm using here to illuminate everything because on this side of the cage is pretty dark. He's over there lurking on them too. Ooh. 
Something told me to stay zoomed out. I like to try to zoom in sometimes, you know? Try to get a good, good close-up. You get a whole lot more definition whenever you zoom in like that. You know what I mean? Compared to just doing it on the computer when you're zooming in. So hopefully that turned out pretty good. I ain't gonna really see it until I edit the video. You know what I mean? You definitely put some venom in this mouse though. Cages are doing good, working out just like how I want it to. Plexiglass is a little bit unforgiving when it comes to cleaning and stuff like that and staying scratch free. I'd probably find like some scratch free towels or something to use that'll probably help keep that down, but ain't ain't too big right now. I think when I build the PVC enclosures I might try to get some glass cut for it and make it to a certain spec so we can make some pretty awesome ones. These PVC ones that do. Or I might just buy some vision cages, you know what I mean? The vision cages are pretty good. You have to do some modifications and things to them, you know what I mean, just to make them work. Because they, they have some heating options and things for like, you know, lamps and things. And some of the enclosures, not all of them. So you have to do what you got to do. I took the little cage off on this one right here, and he's kind of been doing his thing. He stays pretty low to the ground. He doesn't really try to get up around the light. It's not super duper hot anyway. You just touch it with your hand, and it won't burn you. But, uh-oh, look at that. Mmm. Good old stretchy stretch. I don't know. This mouse is even feeling it like that. He's just been kind of stuck over here. But we're going to go ahead and time lapse him until he gets to his meal.